Hi friends, we are back here today to discuss the biochemistry method, a method for quantitative estimation of reducing sugar by the one of the most popular methods uh, in biochemistry overall that is your DNSA method with me Professor Girish Kukreja. Uh, again we are in the series of the videos where we are discussing the uh, very common questions which you may be asked in your viva voce for your practical examinations. So without wasting much time, uh, let us go further for the first question. So the first one states, states the full form of DNSA. Oh, many of the times it is very popular among the students. Ki kaun sa method kar rahe? So they will say DNSA method. You ask them what is the full form, they will look at your face, right? So don't look at the face, but then go for the full form of this method. This DNSA stands for 3,5-dinitrosalicylic acid. So remember the full form of this particular DNSA is 3,5-dinitrosalicylic acid. Yes. The next one, state the principle of this particular method. So as the name suggests that the method is used for estimation of reducing sugars. So uh, it uh, will be estimating the sugars which have the reducing properties. So your uh, DNSA, if you look at the structure of typical DNSA, now this particular DNSA, it looks something like this. So as I told you, 3, 5 dinitro uh, salicylic acid, uh, it is here having a nitro group, here also it is having a nitro group. So this is your 3, 5 dinitro salicylic acid. So this uh, 3, 5 dinitro salicylic acid is somewhat uh, yellowish in color. Uh, after reduction, so you are reducing sugars, right? Uh, they will reduce this 3, 5 dinitro salicylic acid to form a compound that is 3 amino 5 nitro salicylic acid. So you have this nitro group converted to your amino group. So this forms 3 amino 5 nitro salicylic acid. So this particular compound, it is now uh, somewhat uh, reddish in color, right? So orange is red, reddish orange you can say. So the intensity of this particular color is directly proportional to the amount of the reducing sugar present in the given sample. So higher is the reducing sugar in the given sample, the darker or more intense would be the color and higher would be the absorbance. So using this particular relationship, you can estimate how much amount of reducing sugar is present in your given sample. So 3,5-dinitrosalicylic acid reduced by the reducing sugars to form 3-amino 5-nitro salicylic acid so which gives a darker color what is used as the standard for preparation of your stock solution so you can use any uh, reducing sugars in our earlier videos we have seen that what exactly these reducing sugars are uh, and what are the examples of these reducing sugars most commonly the sugar used for preparation of stock is your glucose uh, no doubt you can you go for fructose you can go for maltose but then most commonly used uh, what you call as sugar for preparation of the standard is your glucose. The next one says at what wavelength is the absorbance measured? Now after performing the entire procedure of mixing the different stocks and unknowns and addition of DNSA, uh, boiling and incubation, at what wavelength will you measure this absorbance? So it has an extinction maxima at 540 nanometers. So this particular compound which was found, it has a maximum absorption at 540 nanometers. So the wavelength which you will be using for uh, detecting the absorbance is your 540 nanometer for estimation of this reducing sugar. Yes, this is how is DNSA reagent prepared. Uh, if you look at the recipe of this particular reagent, it basically is made from sodium potassium tartarate, uh, NOH uh, and DNSA. So firstly, you prepare what is called as your sodium potassium tartrate reagent. So this particular sodium potassium tartrate wherein you dissolve 300 gram of this salt in 500 ml of water. So this is the first step. Then secondly, you will prepare your DNSA. Now this DNSA, you will take 10 gram of this reagent uh, and you will dissolve this in 200 ml of your 2 moles per litre of your NH. Now here you have this 500 ml, uh, this you have 200 ml. Uh, in the third step you will mix 1 and 2 
and you will make the volume to one liter. So for this, uh, remember the DNA state gets dissolved only under highly alkaline conditions. So for that, uh, this is simpler. Say for example, if you do not require a one liter of solution, let us see uh, how much or how you prepare it for say 100 ml. So obviously we reduce this uh, all 10 times. So 300 gram I reduce to 30 gram. So I take 30 gram of sodium potassium tartrate. I dissolve this 30 grams in uh, say 50 ml of water. So this will be my first solution. Uh, at the first look, when you weigh the salt, uh, you feel like itna sara salt, itne se pani mein kaise jayega. But you see, it is highly soluble. It gets dissolved easily. So 30 grams of your salt in 50 ml of water in one class. Second, it says 10 gram of DLSA in 200 ml of 2 mole per liter. So to reduce 10 times, I require 20 ml of this. And instead of 10 gram, I'll be using 1 gram. So for 2 moles per liter, I have to calculate NaOH, molecular weight of NaOH. If you see, it is 40. So, if I dissolve 40 in 1 liter, this gives me 1 molar. Right? If I dissolve 80 in 1 liter, this gives me 2 molar. So, for 100 ml, it will be 0.8 in 100 to have the same molarity. Uh, if I want, uh, sorry, 8 in 100, if I want uh, 10 ml of this, this will be 0 0.8. And if I want 20, this will be 1.6 grams. So I take 1.6 grams of NaOH, dissolve in 20 ml of water, right? In this, I will add 1 gram of DNSA. Remember, complete the dissolution of this NaOH in this water only then add DNSA. Don't add DNSA before uh, this, is, this dissolution is complete. So once your 1.6 grams of NaOH has completely dissolved in 20 ml of water, only then add 1 gram of your DNSA. Now you have this one solution, this two solution, so this is say 50 ml, this is uh, 20 ml, now make this volume to 100 ml. So like this you have a 100 ml solution of your DNSA. Stay tuned with us for more in microbiology and biochemistry. Thank you.